So the normal distribution is what we call the bell curve, but statisticians call it the normal distribution. Now, if you have this bell curve in which the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, that special case is called the standard normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Um, another thing you don't need to know, but if you're curious, and I know a few people are, what is this mathematical function? Well, here's what it is, literally. It's f of z. I'm using z's because uh, I'm tying this into the z-scores in the chart in the book. f of z is 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus z squared over 2. And it turns out e is is called the natural base. It's a naturally occurring number. It's approximately 2.718, but it, it goes on forever. It's without a pattern. It's a rational number. Um, so, you don't need to know this, but I, was, I would have been curious if I was in your shoes, and I know I have a few students who are. So, uh, if you're curious about that. <clears throat> it turns out we, we leave all the calculus out of this course it's all been done for you in these charts in the back of the book, so that's why we don't have to worry about these functions. Sometimes, by the way, the, uh, the bell curves, or these normal distributions, are called Gaussian. Gauss, Carl Friedrich Gauss, was uh, one of the top mathematicians of all time, considered one of the three of all time. And uh, Gauss lived from 1777 to 1855. He, uh, incredible genius. Um, I think, without having looked up and verified, I think he probably was the one that discovered the standard normal distribution. And uh, so in his honor, it's called Gaussian sometimes. All right, I'm going to find my place again in the book. Uh, chapter 5, standard normal distribution is on page 195. So. The, um, you know, the, the chart I introduced you in the back of the book, starting on, I think it's on page 649, to use that chart, we create, we calculate z-scores. So the standard score, or the z-score, also known as a standard score, is, for example, um, x minus x bar over s. That's one of the calculations for a z-score. So what, what, where does this come from? Well, uh, think back about that example with IQs, where the mean was 100, standard deviation was 15. Well, a distribution, a normal distribution, with that mean and standard deviation would be a bell curve, but I don't have a chart in the book for it. So it turns out we do a little um, linear transformation here, or some kind of transformation. We turn the those means of standard deviations into the standard normal distribution through the z-score calculation. So it turns out this little calculation takes any bell curve and turns it into this bell curve for which we have a chart. So that's where that came from. Well, the, uh, the standard normal distribution is wonderful when you know the population mean and population standard deviation. When those things are known, then we can um, use the z-score transformation and look up a chart in the back of the book. It turns out, and I'll tie this in with the this one again, <laughs> the, uh, because the binomial distribution for large samples resembles a bell curve, it turns out we use this chart and those types of problems with percentages and decimals. The, uh, the binomial problems, we adapt to the binomial, to the normal distribution. So, all right.
Well, like I said, this works wonderful when you know the population mean and population standard deviation. Now, in, in around 1908, a fellow named William Gossett worked for Guinness Brewery in England, and um, he was an early pioneer in statistics. He was a pioneer in quality control. And um, he was beginning to use statistics in a more modern sense, as we do now, to study consistency and things like this. And it occurred to him that uh, uh, he didn't know the population standard deviation. <laughs> we took samples. You don't know what the population standard deviation is. What do you do? And he found out that, that this was just a little unsatisfactory. Um, in doing statistics, when you don't know the population standard deviation, if you only have a sample standard deviation, then there's, there's some, there appears to be some inaccuracy. So Gossett uh, worked on that, uh, came up with an adjustment known as the student's t-distribution. So the uh, student's t-distribution, sometimes it's called the t-distribution, was created by, uh, or discovered by Gossett around 1908, and he published a paper on it. He was uh, worried at the time that his employer would think he was wasting time on this stuff and <laughs> wouldn't understand it, so he, he published under a pseudonym, called himself Student. That's where it gets its name, student's t distribution. So here's the, the kind of irony about it. We spend a lot of time in statistics introducing the notion of this bell curve, and then for many problems, we just toss it out and use something different called the student's t distribution. Now, if you look on page 195, there is a true bell curve or z distribution, normal distribution. If you flip over to page 198, there is a student's t distribution. And you'll find that it's got the same shape. It's bell-shaped. Well, there's a comparison of the two on page 199. They have one superimposed on the other. You can see that they're a little bit different. And uh, so it turns out um, the student's t distribution is used uh, when the um, the the uh, sam the population standard deviation is unknown. When we have to calculate a sample standard deviation, we use the student's t. Now, now why would there be a problem? Well, because um, when you take a sample, you don't get the population, the actual true population standard deviation for the entire population. What you get is an estimate, which can vary due to ran random randomness. Um, variability of, of randomness that varies. Okay. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this was an adjustment, and in practice, we we use the student's t distribution for smaller samples, in particular, um, usually under thirty or fifty sample size. It turns out for for a large sample, say over thirty, over fifty, we um, it, it, they're so close, the student's t distribution is so close to the standard normal that it, it doesn't matter much. So um, primarily student's t is good for small samples, but in practice people use software anymore and uh, they just plug their samples in the software and, and software just uses the student t regardless of sample size. So anyway, um, <clears throat>